today on a very special episode of A Moment with Dr. Wolf. We get to dive deep into the twisted thoughts and motivations of three hopelessly irredeemable villains. Reforming such troublesome cases will be the doc's biggest challenge yet. So don't touch that dial, you won't want to miss this. And now, here's your host, Dr. Wolf! Discord? What? What is this? Ah, we aren't at the questions portion of the show just yet. Now, let's meet our three celebrity guests. From across the great sea, he's a two-faced centaur who spent an eternity looking to have the buffest body in all the land, no matter how many drained and sickly ponies he leaves behind. It's Lord Tyrek! <laughs> what in the blazes? Next! She found love once by stealing it from others, with an entire kingdom of changeling warriors at her command. But now, with the longest track record of failures to try to conquer Equestria out of any villain, seeking spiteful revenge has become her new life's passion. Let's welcome the former queen, Chrysalis! I'll tear your lip up! What just happened? And finally, Voted the most adorable little Pegasus filly who's not afraid to stab you in the back whilst singing a catchy tune. Let's hear it for Cozy Glow! Let me out! Let me! Uh. <laughs> you. I remember you. You're that annoying little pony servant. What preachy nonsense are you up to this time? And what is this place? Um... Well... Glad you asked, T-Rex! We're coming at you live from the recesses of your minds! United by your stone prison! We're all coming together in hopes that Equestria's favorite professionally profound puppy can persuade you to pursue the path to positivity! <laughs> Hello... You fool! If you think I will sit here and put up with this farce, think again! Equestria will learn to fear me! <laughs> you cretin! What's the meaning of this? So, this is a bit of a funny story. Ever since Princess Twilight assumed rulership of Equestria, I haven't had as many appointments as I used to. A good thing, I suppose. The less turmoil there is in Equestria, the less demand there is for clinical therapy. That was until Discord came by and asked for my assistance. You know, it really has been the life ever since Sparkles took the crown. Fluttershy gave me the idea for a trans-dimensional animal sanctuary. And it's been a delightfully chaotic adventure ever since. But there's been an itch in my side lately, and it kept pulling me back to that hideous statue in the Canterlot Garden. Now... You could say that those three rapscallions made their own mess and got punished for it. But one could also say that I was the one who made their shenanigans possible in the first place. Yeah, in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. But at the very least, I felt that they deserved the same chance I was given in Season 3. And I knew our furry friend here is the most qualified to make that happen. I would guess that it's only my mind that's been transferred into the statue with all of you. So I'm speaking to you all from the outside. It's humiliating enough to be stuck together with these two clowns. Now you're going to try and give me another lecture? No, of course not. I simply haven't given up yet on helping you to change your ways for the better. And I'm hoping you feel the same. Excuse me, Mr. Wolfie, but I don't have to change my ways. I'm already a good filly. Will you please let me out? If you do, you can be my best friend. We can have ice cream together, and you can push me on the swing and... Pest. I'm not a pest! You're a pest! Well, I suppose it's time to get all this underway. So, Mr. T-Rex, Miss Chrysalis, Miss Glow, tell me what's on your minds. 
destruction. Revenge. Pain. Okay, then. Miss Glow, you seem to think you have the best case for release. Let's talk about your situation first. Why was pain your first answer? Oh, golly, Doctor! It's painful to be trapped in a statue with these two! I don't deserve this! I'm just a poor innocent filly who was manipulated by these evil doers! I'm really a good kid who only wanted to graduate from friendship school! I knew there was no way I was going to get out of here unless I could miss this clueless, fast-wearing wolf that I just sweet little filly. I'll just use what I learned at Twilight School to make it do what I want, just like all the others. Wait, what? I never said that! Uh-uh-uh! Remember, this is all in your mind, you three. Your real thoughts will always be made clear whether you like it or not. So you better get used to telling the truth around here. <sighs> Applejack would be so proud. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Miss Glow, what do you mean by using what you learned at Twilight's Friendship School? Hmm. Every pony talks about friendship like it's the most perfect thing in the world. But to me, friendship is a tool. Friendship is a way to get points to do what you want, with nothing in return, except for some faint fuzzy promises to be their friend. It's silly. But if other ponies are dumb enough to believe it, can you blame me for using it to get what I want? Oh, boo yourselves! You're all a bunch of simps! You do realize there isn't anyone else here, right? This is just Discord's way of poking fun at us. Uh, I knew that. I really had no idea. Ah! Well, Miss Glow, I suppose that's an... Ahem, ambitious way to look at the concept of friendship. But if all you ever do is take what you want and give nothing in return, friendships won't last. The point, though, is that the give and take is something that flows naturally because it fulfills you out of mutual gratitude. Haven't you ever experienced that, even with just a few others? Oh, please. I didn't need to give anything to these bozos to get what I wanted. How about I give you a small cramped cocoon stuck to the corner of the wall? Go ahead and try, you creepy crawly! Your family tree is a wreath! Excuse me? Do you know who you're speaking to? The only reason I want to work with these losers is that we all wanted the same thing. To stick it to those pansy ponies! After that, we were going to go our separate ways and rule by ourselves. Are you certain there wasn't any other reason? A common bond or passion that you shared? Ugh. I think your suit's on a little too tight, puppy. How about you, Miss Chrysalis? Have you ever given a fair amount when building a connection? I've never had to give anything for my hive. My subjects showered me with love, and they knew better than to demand anything in return. I gave my orders, and they obeyed them. It was as simple as that. I guided us all to sources of love across the Pony Nation. That is how I thrived for years. And silly notions of friendship will never change that. I had everything I could possibly need until he betrayed me. One of my lowly subjects was seduced by the pony ways of sentiment. And then that sow starlight glamour used it as an opportunity to sway my subjects to give the love that was meant for me. She destroyed my rule. I lost my hive, my servants, and my entire world. How can I forgive those ponies when I have nothing left now? Except Splinter, my only confidant. <laughs> you actually made the long Splinter? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sad! <laughs> Silence! All of you! You know nothing about me! Miss Chrysalis, I know we'd all love to learn more about you. We're all here willing to listen, but in exchange, I 
think you need to be willing to listen yourself. You must be able to give as well as receive. And given how far your former subjects have come these past years, they seem to have learned that lesson very well. How would you understand, Mutt, until you've had hundreds of loyal servants willing to serve you and fight for you without question? You will never know true gratification. If you did, you would understand why I need no equals to stand by my side. Well, I suspect you've always had a desire for love, Miss Chrysalis. But in the past, you've never truly earned it. Your old ways may have worked for some time, but times do change. With your subjects having outgrown that way of life, I'm afraid if you don't follow suit, you will stand frozen in one place, looking for vain excuses for your misery. How foolish do you think I am? Do you think I don't understand your game? You're simply trying to make me weak, like all the others. Friendship is a disease! <laughs> I don't know. You've been holding that pretty tightly. Splinter? You... You traitor! Discord and the dog put you up to this, didn't they? I could have left you with the rest of those mutinous servants in the Everfree Forest. But your queen took pity on you the most. Don't you dare backsex me! <laughs> oh, 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 Splinter. I'm so sorry. Mommy's got you. Oh, your queen is here. Don't worry. I will take care of you. Your queen's here. Why does she think she can get something out of a piece of wood? Because, kid... She's a sap. How about you, Mr. t rex How have you felt lately about companionship? Hmm. <laughs> We've been through this before, Doctor. There's nothing more you can pry out of my head. Are you sure about that, tough guy? <laughs> you really like to talk about Gram Gram in your sleep. What have I told you about bringing up my Gram Gram? That's rather intriguing, t rex Would you be willing to tell us about your family? I'm sure there was a time in your life when you were close to them. Hmm. I'll spell it out for you one more time, pony slave. My ambitions transcend any need of family or friendship. Power is the driving force in my life. There is nothing else. I was stifled my entire life by my overbearing father, King Vorak. He and my mother, Queen Hayden, expected me to be their well-behaved heir to the throne, concerning myself with trivial things like law and order, royal court affairs, and the well-being of the citizenry. They never encouraged my talent for magic. It was the one thing I was truly good at. Unlike my goody-goody little brother, Scorpan, who could do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I would show my father my true potential by becoming the most powerful being in all creation and make him respect me. Maybe then I would finally feel worthy. Oh. I will make you suffer for that, Discord! Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Too bad you'll have to learn to be a good little centaur first, t -Rick. Gonna make dear old dad proud, right? <laughs> t rex back in your prison in Tartarus, I told you I believe that someday, what little good inside of you that was not yet consumed by hatred would lead you to a better place. And yes, you have committed some truly awful acts, and you do need to face your consequences. But that sentiment I expressed for you back then still has not changed. If that attack you planned with these two had anything to show, it is that you do have the capacity to put your trust in others, and the fact that you were going to respect their wishes to let them rule their own kingdoms shows that it was a collaboration built on respect, however unspoken it was. Believe it or not, you have grown to some extent. And what if I have, Dr. Wolf? Whether I have grown or not, it is not good for you or your pony masters. It does not matter if I was alone or together with these fools. 
It would still have spelled doom for all of Equestria. So why do you persist on forcing me down the path of companionship when it still leads to destruction? Because I believe that if you can truly understand companionship, it will influence you to turn away from that path of destruction. I would rather take the chance to allow someone to find fulfillment in the company of others than leave them in the coldness of solitude. It is about more than following others who share the same goals. It is about learning and cherishing those who think differently and showing the will to grow from their examples. I'm afraid it is too late for that. Anyone who could not follow in my search for power was merely an obstacle meant to be thrown aside. There is no one else I need to learn from to that end. Well, you see, T-Rex, that was actually the tricky part before coming here. We stopped by a certain ancient kingdom neighboring Equestria to invite our special guest. Uh, should we bring him out? Wait, what? Are you serious? Lady Cords and Gentle Cords, please put your claws and paws together and welcome to the stage, King Scorpan! Uh, hi, everyone. Hello, brother. Scorpan! No, no, you are not real! Of course I am, Tyrek. I was having tea time with the Breezies when I heard you've been traveling Equestria again. I was too scared to see you after all these years. Go away! We are too far beyond family pleasantries. Besides, you betrayed me first when you sold me out to those pony princesses! Tyrek, you may be my brother, but there is no way I could have followed you down the path you were going. I just wanted to say, you might have done some truly terrible things, and you may not believe that I'm actually here. But at the very least, what I want to do for you is give you this moment. Isn't that amazing? Ponies come together for friendship energy is one thing, but how much energy would there be from two royal brothers? A centaur and whatever that thing is. One of them can absorb magic and grow huge, and the other, I don't know what the other can do. I bet it's powerful and awesome, and imagine what they can do together, or even all four of us, especially me! <laughs> Kid, just hold your ton for once in your life. <sighs> it's good to be- Well, I hope someone has some plastic on hoof, because that's a wrap! Sure, our special guests have to spend another few dozen moons in stone-cold solitude, but hey, it's progress! All thanks to the dynamic duo of Discord and Dr. Wolf. Now let's hear it, ladies and germs! It's good to be broken. Well done, Discord. I think we did a good thing today. However, perhaps you could give me some warning next time before you rope me into one of these crazy scenarios of yours? Oh, fine, if you insist. Perhaps next time I'll warn you with a surprise bullhorn or car alarm or an exploding clipboard. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, wait! I didn't mean- Don't worry, it's no trouble! Just don't expect me to warn you about the warning. <laughs> <sighs>